Hi, Tony. Hi, Vesta. Good morning. How is everybody? Oh, thank you, Tony, for sharing. Hi, Doris. Hi, Teresa. Yay, I've missed you guys. Hi, Pam. And Deborah. Oh, my goodness. I'm so glad to see you guys. Oh, my gosh. I so missed you guys, but last week I was burning both my candle at both ends and I just didn't feel like I could do the project justice because I had like more than one thing I wanted to show you and it just was overwhelming. So I had to put it on the back burner. Hey, Mindy. Hi, Lori. So thank you for understanding. I just, I pushed it and, um, I, I, I had to, I had to back away. Hi, Kathy. And who would ever have thought that a dog would demand so much of your time? He's, he's like two years old and it was like, I had kids. I thought it was going to be easy peasy. I could go down the street, take my crafts with me. He would just lay on the couch and want to chill out. But no, he constantly wanted my attention. So it wasn't as easy as I thought that uh, it was going to be. <laughs> so, hey, Sharon. Oh, you're not creating along with me today? I'm sure you'll still get your card done in record time. It's a really easy um, project. And um, it is just really, really super cute. Hi, Donna. Where are you watching from? And I will give you a clue. It's one of my favorite things. And that's all you're going to get because you're going to learn it as we, you know, as I show it. So um, I thought that would be fun if you didn't know ahead of time. Hi, Susan. Okay, so we got quite a few people on here. Um... I'm going to flip the camera around. It's easier to show the things that I have in front of me. Um, that way, instead of trying to hold it up and then not sure which direction I'm supposed to move it so that you can see it well. Um, a little update. Yes, the plovers have officially fledged, but the chicks are still around. This morning I was out at the beach and we had three of them visiting. Definitely they've moved on past our beach, wherever they're hanging out, but there was three uh, visiting this morning foraging. So they're still with us, but they've just, they're expanding how far away that they're going and then flying back um, to, to eat and uh, forage along the, uh, the shoreline. So they're still here. They haven't officially left for, for the south. We have north winds. Friday night and Saturday so maybe they'll leave when with the winds going from the north pushing them south we'll just have to wait and see maybe they just love us so much because we watch over them and have taken care of them and I have to tell you the success rate for a nest is 1.33 chicks out of four will make it through their first migration we still have four they haven't migrated yet but i just have a really good feeling in the pit of my stomach that they really know what they're supposed to do and that they're going to be fine so i'm going to go with that so i am going to hi brenda i'm going to flip the camera around as you can see i kind of have my setup done a little differently um i moved my workspace to um, my workspace is in like an L, so I moved it so that I'm facing a different direction and um, I'm getting used to that. So you might notice there's, doesn't look the same behind her. So hold on. Yeah, we just, oops, that's not the one we wanted. There we go. Let me lower it just a little bit. Uh 
Okay. So, first things first, I got some happy mail. And um, Dora sent me two of the cutest cards to put together. So, I have some projects to do. She sent me this little card kit. And she sent me this little card kit. And I got to tell you, she fussy cuts all of these little pieces. And she sent me some extras, which I just love because I'm terrible at fussy cutting. But can look at how little. Can you see how small these pieces are that she fussy cutted? Look at that. So amazing. But she sent me all of these little fussy cutted pieces out. And I believe, is this from the designer series paper that is part of Celebration, Doris? I just love it. But her paper, uh, her fussy cutting is impeccable. There is no way I could be that even all the way around. So thank you, Doris. I can't wait to put these together. So I'm going to set those aside. And since I had to cancel last week, I didn't get to share myself that Celebration is going on and that the mini catalog went live. So not only can you earn free product with a $50 order and above, but I, give a, I send you something too if your order is $50. So you could get my freebie and as a thank you and you can choose from the celebration brochure items that you want for free um, my august host code is 2t r2d2 which that's easy to remember and then pz okay and i have that posted on my on my um, facebook page for the chirpy card maker of quilts and more so there's that get that out of the way and let's get on with the project oh yeah you're noticing how great her fussy cutting is um yep it's the dsp that she fussy cutted doris i just can't get over how perfect you do better than a die cut um a die you do a better job than dies. So thank you so much for sharing that with me. So the what I had you have for today is a 4 by 12 inch strip of designer series paper. And then what we're going to do with that is I'm going to bring in my trimmer and we're going to cut this. We're going to cut two 4 by 5 and a quarter inch pieces now I have to since I've moved things around I have to get I have to get um, reacquainted with how I got myself set up here so we're gonna cut two four by five and a quarter inch pieces And then with this piece that's left over, we are going to cut that at, I believe it's three, three quarters of an inch so that you'll have two three quarter inch pieces. Okay, so that's the cutting for that. Set that aside. And this is a three and a half. You have a three and a half by four and three quarters piece. This goes, um, this will be on the outside of your card. Your inside of your card, your insert is four by five and a quarter. And I am just using basic white thick um, cardstock for my card base. This one's cut at four and a quarter by 11, scored at five and a half. 
you could do five and a half by eight and a half and score at four and a quarter also, okay? And my orientation is going to be in landscape mode, okay? So let's get back to, we're going to, I'm bringing in a, um, a rounded corner punch. And what I got started on these with the last project, and I've been doing a lot of rounded corners lately. So <laughs> um, what I'm going to do is on our designer series paper, I am going to round off um, the corners, not of all four, but the two corners that are across from each other. So I'm going to do that on both, both of these pieces. I like that it's got this, well, it's the look that we got when we did the, um, the project last time. So I'm just going to go ahead I was going to order the trio punch, but you guys, other things were calling my name on my order. So it's going to have to wait. I apologize. And then this is that three and a half by four and three quarters. I'm going to do the same thing just on the two opposite corners. And then on my insert, I'm going to do the same thing. Um, but you know what? Let's not do that one yet. Let's, before we punch it, now it makes it a little bit tighter, but these two pieces that I cut off, I am going to, I'm going to adhere these to both sides and then I'm going to punch my corner. And you know what? I think I might, I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to put, hmm. Do I want to do that because my ink for the inside is going to be crumb cake? No, we'll just we'll just put the pattern out. I hope I'm in camera here. Okay. I'm going to put that, just going to frame the sides with those leftover pieces. Why, why throw them into our scrap bin? I'm just going to go ahead and use them. And then I'm going to punch alternate the, um, okay. It got a little harder, but it did punch. Okay, so that's my inside. And now what we're going to do is we're going to do some stamping. Let me get some of these pieces out of the way here. So on this front piece, what I'm going to do is I am using the, um, the Biggest Wish, that's done, uh, stamp set. And I'm using Hello and I'm using Friend. So what I'm going to do is in crumb cake, because it's a coordinating color with the paper that I chose, this is on the front of the card. I am going to stamp hello, and I always like to test my stamps before I put them down, just to make sure that the image looks good. And I'm just going to pull this out of... Um, view here just so that I can see what I'm doing here. And I'm going to stamp it in the upper left hand corner. Like so. Okay. Now the inside to my card, I am going to stamp friend but I am going to shift it over here to the right. And you know what I forgot? These are photopolymer. All right. Yeah. The 
photopolymer stamp, so I need to have some cushion underneath me. I'm just going to test it out. Okay. And then I'm going to put friend up here. And I want, I'm going to bring in my crumb cake marker. And I want three little dots. to the left of my, so I'm just gonna do this, like that. So there's the stamping on the inside. Now what we can do is we can attach this to our card base. What did I do with it? Let's go ahead and Put this down. This is a fast little card that's adorable. So let's just put that down. So there's our inside. And while we, let's flip it over. That other piece, um, you have these two pieces that are four by five and a quarter. One is going to be on the front of your card, and I'm going to, I want to snazz up the back of my card. So I am going to use this for the front, and I'm just going to flip it, and this is going to be the back. I just want to jazz up the back. I'm liking doing that too since I started doing it. Because with with the quilt cards, we really don't use a whole lot of designer series paper or pieces of cardstock for that matter because our projects are so tiny. So I want to use up my designer series paper. So let's put some on the back. And then while we've got that, I might as well put my little button on the back. that. Okay, so now we can go, um, oh, we'll be going to the front of our card. What I want to do with this piece right here, I'm going to punch a two, I've got a two and a quarter inch circle here. You just want to make sure that we're going to punch a circle out of this, uh, and then we're going to layer this piece on top. You just want to make sure that when you take your circle out that it's not too close and leaves um, leaves your punched out shape showing. So just make sure that you can get in to your, to your paper and still leave. Um, you can cover it up with that piece that we're going to put on top. So we're just going to punch that out. And then what we can, what we'll do is we will just glue this to the top. Now, if your paper has direction, you're going to want to pay attention to that. Um, you know, if what, what, orientation is your card? Is it portrait? Is it landscape? Um, and what is the orientation of the designer series paper? Is it, you know, with the direction, if it's directional, you're going to want to pay attention to that. Okay, so we're going to put that down. This is going to get covered up with this piece right here. Okay, and this designer series paper, this is from the Harvest, um, the Harvest designer series paper in the mini catalog. Let's see, where is that? Bum, 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 bum. Harvest Meadow. This is the designer series paper that I'm using. Okay, in case you were wondering, got a piece of glue on there. 
Okay, so we can set our card aside. We're going to come back to this piece right here. What I want you to do is I want you to take your circle and we're going to fold it and you can you can decide how much out how much of this you want to see. Do you want to see just a little or do you want to see a little bit more? You can decide and then just crease it and then bring in your bold your bone folder to get a nice crease. So that's what we're doing with our circle. We're just folding part of it onto itself. Now I want to, I want to put this kind of like, kind of like right there. But before I glue it down, I also suggested that you have a heart, a punched heart, or you have a stamped heart. I don't have any heart punches. So I found the heart out of the stamp set, Birds and Branches. And I'm going to use this heart right here. And so I'm going to stamp my heart in Calypso Coral. And I am just going to hold this down. I'm going to pull this out of view so I can see what I'm doing. And then you'll see. And, and the, the point of the heart is going to, I want it to touch this corner right here. So we're just going to put that right there. Oh, no. Let's see if I can. Let's see if I can do this. That's not too bad. You know why? Because where's my Calypso Coral? Okay, Calypso Coral is in which collection? That's Flirty Flamingo. That's petal pink blush. Oh, I found it. Calypso Coral. I'm just going to touch up my heart here. Saved. Saved, saved, saved. Okay, just throw that up. Okay, so here I have a heart. And here I had my circle. So now what I want to do is I want, I'm going to go ahead and put some glue. Oh, let's close this ink pad because that's an accident waiting to happen. We're going to glue this down. Come on, glue. And I wanted that to go like that. I want it on a little bit of an angle. And if you've seen this design on Pinterest, you're going to know exactly what I'm doing, what I'm making here. Okay, so we got that. Now what I want to do is I want to stamp something that I'm just going to tell you, this is a bird. And we need to ground this little bird so he doesn't look like he's just floating on, on the paper. So that's why I suggested getting something that can ground them. Like, I'm going to use this right here from Life is Beautiful. But if you go through your um, stamp sets, anything that that looks like a shadow might look like uh, little dots of sand, whatever will m help you ground your bird. That's what you want. So I'm going to use that and I'm going to bring in the crumb cake and I am going to test my stamp so I don't do what I did 
with the Calypso Coral. Okay, I like that. That'll be good. And I am going to put this right down here. Like that. Okay, this is just to ground our little bird. And the doodling part comes in because I'm going to take my black marker and we're going to doodle the legs. So you just decide where you want the legs. And then I just give him, put a little V there to give him three toes. Okay, so just give your bird some feet. And then what I wanna do is I've got a little, and you do not have to get technical what, with what color your beak is. A whimsy bird is the cutest bird. So don't think you have to stick with traditional beak colors, okay? Use, a color of cardstock that coordinates with the designer series paper that you're using. And I'm just going to cut from the corner. I'm just going to cut a cut a beak and it doesn't even have to be it doesn't have to be perfect. I'm just going to cut a beak. I'm going to put a tiny bit of glue on the back, I'm gonna hold on to that. I'm gonna turn this around, open that up so that I can, and I'm gonna come down just a little ways from the top and I'm gonna put my beak right there, okay? So there's our beak. Now I don't wanna leave this flapped open so I'm going to bring in some dimensionals. I also don't want to put my dimensionals to where it closes this. I want it to have some dimension. So I'm going to put my dimensionals just, just to the side of the crease. If you put it down too far, it closes the fold, and then you don't have that 2D look. So then let's just take the backing off of. And when we close this, see how we have our shadow and it, it pops up. It looks like it's sitting on top. So there's, there's, um, there's our bird. But now the bird needs an eye. And one of the things I learned in how to draw birds is your eye needs to be on the same angle as the beak. If I was to put the eye over here, I don't know how to explain it. With a bird, it's, it's beak and his eye, if you want it looking in a direction, needs to align. So I'm going to take the, um, these are the black matte dots. I'm going to take a small one. And I am going to put it on the same trajectory as the, as, as his beak. So it means it's going to sit a little high, but there is our bird's eye. And what we'll do is we'll go ahead and we will now put this on our front. And then we're just gonna add some bling and our chirpy, oh, what did I call this video? Chickadoodle. Um, the CEO or the executive director of Black Swamp Bird Observatory, who they are the organization that put the volunteers together for um, watching over the plovers. 
she's been affectionately calling our chicks little chickadoodles. So we're going to make little chickadoodles today. We're making our own chickadoodles. And you'll notice that my curved piece, my curved punch is aligning with the curves on these two corners, square in those two corners. So there's our little bird. And then what I decided on, these are the holiday gems. And I'm bringing out the crushed curry that is in this designer series paper. And these yellow, I don't think they're crushed curry, but they're close enough. And so I'm going to put three of those on my card. And we're going to just, you know, do the, the triangle here. Just randomly place it. And that's how simple our card is. You could, um, you could dis, um, bling it out more if you wanted to. You could add ribbon if you wanted to. Um, it's really up to you. I wanted to keep my cards a little clean and simple. The one that I did first, here I have it in portrait mode. And here's landscape mode. If you want your chickadoodle to have some really long legs, go in portrait because you can really make those legs long. So portrait and landscape. And then we have the insides. We have the backs. Here I only put one strip down here. There's the back. Oh, I'll get us these. Phew. Excuse me. Um, so what do you think about the chickadoodle card? Oh, Jean's going to be making one. Tony, I'm glad you like it. Hi, Bonnie. How are you? Oh, my goodness. I see hearts. Yay. Hi, Pat. I got to get this light shining out of my eyes. Um, oh, South Dakota. You've got, um, yeah, you got bike week. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> wow yeah Sturgis is going on my husband and I ride we have a 20 so boy what is it maybe a 2014 we have a, a trike a Harley trike and we ride we haven't been out much this year because well he has I haven't because I've been out doing plover duty um, but yeah, we ride and we really enjoy it, but you know what we like, we're more bikers that we just go out on our own and putz around and look for a restaurant or an ice cream stop to make. <laughs> um, I've been to a couple big events and they're very interesting to say the least. Um, but we like just being out our own putzing around with, you know, no plan. So, but I can only imagine what Sturgis is like. Okay. Mindy says she's lurking. <laughs> you can lurk, Mindy. That's fine. <laughs> Hi, Pat. Well, thank you for enjoying the card. And so, you know, the challenge is going to be, um, I will draw a winner Let's give it, It's let's say Monday again. Um, make your, your bird cards over the weekend and post them in the group. And then for everybody who shares their chickadoodle, then your name will go into a drawing and I will send you something. I wanted to show you the other cards that I made with this. I made some Christmas cards. So this one here now definitely... You could um, really jazz this up, maybe put some sprigs of um, something or some pine cones in the corner. I don't have anything like that, 
but you could definitely add more to this card to make it more of um, a holiday card. But warm wishes for a happy uh, Christmas. This is out of the best year stamp set. And again, this one I did, I, I rounded all four corners on this one and on the inside and then reversed the designer series paper for the back. But you can do your holiday cards. Here's another one. And this is the the um, the six by six Christmas paper that's in the annual catalog. So here's another little Christmas bird. I know I've got I've got another Christmas bird. I got a couple. Here's a Christmas bird from that same six by six collection. Now here I used a rhinestone for the bird's eye. There's the inside and the back. And I did, how many people know someone who has a birthday right around Christmas? Well, the, this designer, the Whimsy Designer Series paper, I thought looked like a really nice paper to use for someone who has a birthday right around the holidays. The polished pink makes it really, really a lot of fun. So I used happy birthday to you and just left that blank inside. But I thought that would be a really cute birthday card for someone. It's got holiday paper, but it doesn't really scream Christmas. So you can still celebrate their birthday during that time and send them a little, a little bird here. And then I had a card front that I had punched a circle out of. And so I thought, well, how about, now definitely something needs to be put on the front here. I don't know how to finish it. But you could put all of this on the inside. And so your bird is peeking out of this little window here. So that's an idea. And then um, the in symmetry designer series paper. I did this one. And Hey Friend, I believe, comes from the Cemetery uh, stamp set. And then here is another one. And I used the last year's Just Jade embellishments. Same designer series paper. And then I thought, okay, I want a mama chickadoodle with her babies. I'm not really thrilled over this card that I did last night, but you'll get the idea of what I was going for. And it's another idea for you um, to continue this, um, this simple little design of just punching a circle, not quite folding it in half, so that you've got some belly here and then you've got the designer series paper making up the body. But this is a mini sl slimline card. And I used a one inch punch for the little chickadoodles. And this, this designer series paper is out of the celebration uh, catalog and I colored in I really like black when we black and purple posy when purple posy was an in color. So this is the freesia um, in color for this year. I really like black and this color together. The opposite side of this designer's series paper has these scallops, and I thought, well, those could be feathers. So you can see I gave the thought press process was long. And I thought, well, you know what? It's just too plain. So how about if I color in with the pale papaya, just the bottom of the bellies. Now the chicks have a wider area, but as they grow, that'll get smaller. See, overthinking, right? <laughs> You're probably laughing at me. Overthinking it, Julie. So here's a mini slim line, and you can put a big chickadoodle with some babies. And then again, their little legs are a little tinier because they're babies. 
and then anchored them with a stamp that grounds them and they don't look like they're just floating. And the inside of this one just looks like this. I, I used my markers and colored in the designer series paper because it's a it it allows you to do that with um well here's the back you can see this is the back side so you could use blends or your markers or you could even sponge color onto that but that's um, a celebration paper there so i just wanted to show you the different looks that you can get with the different um designer series paper and the fact that you could do little christmas birds if you know cardinals are really popular at christmas time so if you use red designer series papers you could mimic a cardinal if you wanted his beak to be orange instead of this color you do it however you want but i think this is a design that really has possibilities for year round and they're cute. Who doesn't like a bird card? So, um, so there's today's project. And the challenge is to make your chickadoodles and make your cards and post them over into the Quilt Cards and More Facebook group so that we can all see your spin on these little birds and, and what you use to embellish your cards with to give us more ideas i i kept mine i kept mine clean and simple but i would really like to see um, your ideas if you're using ribbon if you're die cutting some sprigs or and you know just putting putting more onto the front so i can't wait to see what you do this is probably the shortest live i've ever done it's not even a quarter after 12 yet. Does anybody have any questions? Hi, Susan. How are you? Did you see my little chickadoodles? Kim Kaufman has been calling the plovers chickadoodles, the chicks. So I'm stealing her, hers. Um, oh, I'm losing my train of thought. But just the... Just her lovely, loving way of describing those plover babies. I'm kind of stealing it. So we made chickadoodles today. Okay, simple stamping, just a circle punch, doodling with our markers, little bit of bling, stamp it, and you're done. So if there's not any questions, Teresa says her birthday is in December, and I would love to get a card like that. I'm going to have to make note of that, Teresa. Thank you for sharing that. Oh, Jean says her December 24th is his birthday. Oh, my goodness. He gets to celebrate two days in a row. Vesta, husband and daughter. Wow, there's a lot of December birthdays around the holidays. Awesome. Well, now you can just kind of use this design. And, and it's so quick. And, you know, we a lot of times, I don't know about you, but I'll have squares of designer series paper left over that I just don't see the possibility of putting it in the design of the card. But now I'm going to start punching a circle out of it and just start putting those circles in a little container. And then when I want to make a chickadoodle, I just go to my circles and I go from there. So when you've got those squares of um, designer series paper that just seem too small to use and it's a square and how in the world would I design around this, punch a circle out of it and start Start saving those in a little container. So, let me see. Hi, Cheryl. Oh, there, oh, there's a swap idea. I like that. Hi, Mary. Where are you watching from? I haven't recognized your name from before. I'd love to know where you're watching from. Okay, so I will go back through comments and um, answer any questions that you might have. 
remember that celebration is going on right now. So every $50 that you, um, that you spend out of the mini catalog or the annual catalog earns you free products. And, um, I send out a thank you gift for orders of $50 or more. And let's see, there's the August host code. R2D2 is the only two th the only four out of that that I can remember. And um, I think that's it. Again, Doris, thank you for the happy mail and the fussy cutted uh, penguins and polar bears and foxes. They are so awesome. I'm seriously there. I don't think a die could do that work justice. You're better than a die. I love hanging out with everybody, so I will see you next Thursday at 1130, and uh, we'll create another card together. And again, when you make this card, post it over in the Facebook group so that we can ooh and ah over it, and we can get some ideas. I will see everybody later.